Right now, Australia is making the biggest naval investment in its history, $368 billion dollars over the next three decades. That's not a typo, $368 billion. To put that in perspective, that's more than Australia's entire annual GDP was back in the 1990s, and most of it going toward vessels and systems designed to operate in ways that previous generations of naval power never imagined. No massive aircraft carrier groups. No battleship fleets visible from space. Instead, something far more concerning to military strategists around the world. A navy designed to be unseen. And that's why from Beijing to Washington, Jakarta to Tokyo, defense planners are completely rethinking the Pacific power balance. Let's break down what's actually happening, because the reality is more significant than the sensational headlines. In September 2021, Australia made a decision that shocked its oldest ally, France, and changed Indo-Pacific defense strategy overnight. They cancelled a $90 billion diesel-electric submarine contract with France and instead joined AUKUS, a trilateral security partnership with the United Kingdom and the United States. The centerpiece? Nuclear-powered submarines. Here's what's actually been announced. Phase 1, 2027-2030S. Australian naval personnel will train on U.S. and U.K. nuclear submarines increase rotational presence of U.S. Virginia-class submarines in Australian ports starting early 2030s. Australia to receive three to five Virginia-class submarines from the U.S. Phase 2, 2040s. Australia will build and operate SSN AUKUS submarines. A new design based on UK technology. These will be constructed in Adelaide, South Australia target. Eight submarines total in the Australian fleet. Real senior perspective. Meet Admiral Chris Barry. He is 79 years old and served as Chief of the Australian Defence Force from 1998 to 2002. When AUKUS was announced, journalists expected him to celebrate. Instead... He said something that made headlines. We are building submarines that won't arrive until the 2040s. What about the capability gap now? His point wasn't that AUKUS was wrong. It was that Australia faces immediate strategic challenges while waiting decades for these submarines. That reality check matters. The significance. According to the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, ASPI, nuclear-powered submarines can stay submerged for months. Not weeks. Diesel subs must surface regularly to recharge batteries. Travel at higher sustained speeds underwater operate at extended ranges, crucial in the vast Pacific Ocean. Dr. Malcolm Davis from ASPI put it bluntly in 2023. These submarines will give Australia the ability to hold at-risk targets at distance, creating genuine strategic deterrence. But here's the catch. Australia won't have weapons-grade nuclear material or nuclear weapons. These are nuclear-powered, meaning the reactors drive the propulsion system. That's it. Regional reaction. China's foreign ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian called AUKUS extremely irresponsible and accused the three nations of having a Cold War mentality. Indonesia's foreign minister Retno Masudi expressed deep concern about nuclear proliferation risks. Malaysia's prime minister at the time, Ismail Sobri Yaakob, warned it could spark a regional arms race. Even New Zealand, Australia's closest neighbour and ally, maintained its ban on nuclear-powered vessels in its waters. The concerns are real. But so are Australia's stated reasons for the program. The geography problem. Australia is an island nation utterly dependent on maritime trade. Here are the verified numbers. 99% of Australia's international trade by volume moves by sea. Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade... 2023, five hundred billion plus in annual trade value relies on shipping routes 70% of that trade passes through the South China Sea. Now here's the problem. Contested waters. Since 2014, China has constructed artificial islands in the South China Sea and militarized them with a strips capable of handling military aircraft, anti-aircraft, missile systems, radar, installations, naval facilities. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, tribunal ruled in 2016 that China's claims to most of the South China Sea had no legal basis. China rejected the ruling entirely and continued island construction. According to the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative, AMTI, at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, 
China now occupies seven major features in the Spratly Islands. These installations have effective radar coverage over virtually all the South China Sea military aircraft operating from these bases. Can reach shipping lanes critical to Australia in under an hour. What Australia fears, Dr. Ewan Graham, a former diplomat and now senior analyst, explained it in practical terms. If a major conflict occurred and the South China Sea became contested or denied territory, Australia would face immediate economic crisis. Food imports, manufacturing components, fuel, all interrupted. Real person perspective. David Lee is 71 years old. He captained commercial cargo vessels for 35 years, regularly transiting between Australia and Asian ports. When asked about the South China Sea situation, he didn't talk about missiles or strategy. He said, "Every master knows those waters aren't really international anymore. You feel watched. Systems monitor you. In a real crisis, I don't know if civilian shipping continues. That's a fear driving Australian defence planning, not theoretical war scenarios, but a very real possibility of economic strangulation through maritime disruption." The data backs a concern. A 2022 report by the Lowy Institute found Australian public support for defending freedom of navigation in the South China Sea increased from 42 percent, 2018, to 58 percent, 2022. 63 percent of Australians now see China's military activities in the region as a critical threat. This isn't manufactured panic. It's a measurable shift in public perception based on observable Chinese military expansion. Beyond submarines, when people hear invisible fleet, they imagine something from science fiction. The reality is more technical and more significant. Autonomous underwater vehicles (AUVs). Australia is investing heavily in unmanned underwater systems. Here's what's confirmed: Boeing Echo Voyager. Australia has partnered with Boeing on extra-large unmanned underwater vehicles (XLUVs). These can operate autonomously for months. No crew required can conduct surveillance, mine detection, and area denial operations. Length, 51 feet (15.5 meters), can dive to 11,000 feet, and a real ghost shark. In 2024, Australia awarded contract to Andrew Australia to produce autonomous submarines designed specifically for Royal Australian Navy operations. Can be manufactured faster and cheaper. Than crewed submarines' first prototypes expected by 2025. Why this matters, according to defence analyst Dr. Malcolm Davis, one crewed submarine can patrol one area at a time, but that same submarine, supported by six autonomous vehicles, can monitor a far larger operational space. The strategic advantage isn't invisibility in some magical sense; it's persistent presence without risking Australian lives. Acoustic signature reduction. Modern submarines and underwater drones use several technologies to reduce detection. Anechoic tiles, rubber-like coatings that absorb sonar pings instead of reflecting them, pump jet propulsion, quieter than traditional propellers, internal noise dampening. Everything from machinery to crew movement creates noise. Modern designs minimize this low magnetic signatures, reducing detectable magnetic fields. A 2021 report by the International Institute for Strategic Studies noted. Modern submarine detection is extraordinarily difficult. Ocean background noise, thermal layers, and vast distances mean even Allied navies struggle to track their own submarines during exercises. Real perspective: Commander Sarah Williams, retired, 68, served in the Royal Australian Navy for 30 years as a submarine warfare officer. Her take: People think invisible means magic. It means engineering. Every decibel of noise you eliminate, every passive sensor you deploy, that's what wins. She added, "But here's what worries me: if we can't detect these systems reliably, how do we prevent accidents with civilian vessels? How do we ensure friend or foe identification works when systems operate autonomously?" Those questions remain partially answered. The uncomfortable truth: Australia isn't just buying submarines and drones. They are integrating artificial intelligence into command and control systems. What's confirmed? In 2024, the Australian Defence Force released its AI for Defence strategy, which outlined AI-assisted threat classification systems, autonomous route planning for unmanned vehicles, predictive maintenance for naval vessels, enhanced sensor fusion, 
combining radar, sonar, satellite data. The stated goal, reduce reaction time in identifying threats and responding to them. The concern, a 2023 study published in Science Robotics found, autonomous weapon systems can reduce human decision-making time from minutes to seconds. However, in ambiguous scenarios, such as distinguishing between civilian and military vessels, error rates increased by 18 to 34 percent when humans were removed from immediate decision loops. Translation, AI is fast, but fast decisions aren't always correct decisions. International debate. The campaign to stop killer robots, a coalition of NGOs, has called for international treaties banning fully autonomous weapons. Australia has stated it will maintain meaningful human control over all weapon systems. But what does that mean in practice? If an AI identifies a potential threat and recommends action, and a human operator has eight seconds to decide, is that meaningful control or just rubber stamping machine decisions? Expert warning. Dr. Toby Walsh, a professor of AI at UNSW Sydney and international expert, warned in 2023, we are entering an era where machines can make kill decisions faster than humans can intervene. The question isn't whether the technology works, it's whether we can live with the inevitable mistakes. Real Perspective Lieutenant Colonel Mark Thompson, retired, 70, served in the Australian Army and now teaches military ethics. His question haunts defense planners. If an autonomous system makes a mistake and sinks a civilian vessel, who's responsible? The programmer? The commander? The government that deployed it? No one has a clear answer yet. Australia's position. The Department of Defense maintains that all autonomous systems operate under strict rules of engagement with human oversight. But as these systems become more complex and operate at greater distances, that oversight becomes harder to maintain. That tension between technological capability and ethical accountability remains unresolved. It's not about Australia. Here's the truth that defense analysts whisper but rarely say publicly. Australia's naval build-up matters because it's a test case for everyone. The pattern, Japan is expanding its submarine fleet and developing autonomous naval systems. South Korea is building advanced diesel-electric submarines and investing in AI War for India is expanding its submarine force and developing indigenous underwater drones. Even smaller nations like Singapore are acquiring advanced submarines. Why? Because the ocean is the choke point. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, 80% of global trade by volume moves by sea, 90% of data transmitted between continents travels through undersea cables. The Indo-Pacific region contains 60% of the world's maritime trade routes. Control those routes, or even create uncertainty about who controls them, and you control the global economy. What Australia represents. Dr. Rory Medcalf, head of the National Security College at the Australian National University, explained, Australia isn't building this fleet to invade anyone. It's building it to ensure that in a crisis, no single power can isolate Australia or dictate terms by controlling sea lanes. The Economic Reality A 2023 analysis by the Peterson Institute for International Economics found, if major shipping routes through the South China Sea became contested or blocked for just 30 days, global GDP could contract by 0.5-0.8% regional economies dependent on those routes could contract by 3-6% supply chain disruptions would ripple worldwide for months. Real Perspective James Chen is 73. He immigrated to Australia from Taiwan in 1978 and spent his career in logistics and supply chain management. When asked about Australia's naval investment, he said something unexpected. My family escaped conflict once. We came here because it was far from war. Now my grandchildren ask me, will these submarines keep them safe or make them targets? He paused, then added, I tell them, weakness invites aggression. Strength creates space for peace. I hope that's true. The hope and the fear. Australia's bet, and it is a bet, is that visible deterrence prevents war, that having capabilities forces rational actors to choose negotiation over conflict. But deterrence only works if potential adversaries believe you'll use those capabilities. And once both sides have invisible fleets powered by AI making split-second decisions, no one knows how stable that world will be.
So here's where we stand. Australia is spending $368 billion to operate submarines that won't fully arrive until the 2040s, deploying autonomous drones that make decisions in milliseconds, and integrating AI into systems that were once controlled entirely by humans. Regional neighbors are nervous. Some Australians worry about becoming a bigger target. Others argue it's the only rational response to a changing strategic environment. And military planners around the world are watching. Because if Australia's model works, everyone will copy it. If it fails, everyone will learn from that too. So I'll leave you with this. Would an invisible fleet make you feel safer, knowing that beneath the ocean, systems are operating 24-7, watching for threats, protecting trade routes? Or does it make you more nervous, knowing that increasingly autonomous weapons are making decisions faster than any human can intervene? Because there's no going back now. The technology exists, the investments are made, and the Pacific Ocean is about to become a very different place. What do you think? Let us know in the comments.